Hey guys, welcome to Point Carding, and today we're going to talk about the 16 common mistakes that you can make when you're installing your Briggs & Stratton 206 engine and how to prevent some of them. With a back to basics design and a reliable engine system, the Briggs & Stratton 206 is used nationwide by thousands of racers to compete across the country in a variety of categories and is one of the most well-known engines in kart racing today. However, just like anything involved in performance applications, there are a few things that you're gonna to wanna to check before you hit the track. And the first one we're gonna talk about is setting your float height. When transported from the Briggs & Stratton factory, inevitably things can get jostled around in shipping, and so it's really crucial to check this before you do anything else on your 206 engine. The float is a mechanism that is inside the float bowl of the carburetor and moves up and down depending on the amount of fuel surrounding it, which changes how much fuel is injected into the combustion chamber of the engine. It's crucial to get this adjustment right so that you can have the ideal running operation, temperature, and performance from your LO206 engine. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do to remove your carburetor from the 206 engine is loosen the locking cap for the uh, throttle slide mechanism at the very top of your engine. This can be done by hand. It should be nothing more than slightly tighter than hand tight. Once you loosen this, beware, there is a spring in here that actuates the throttle slide moving up and down. So you wanna make sure that you don't lose that. Simply pull this off, set it aside, remove the spring, and with your pinky finger, if you have a skinny finger like me, reach in there and pull the throttle slide mechanism out. Set those aside, try not to set them in any dust where they can get dirty. Um, maybe set them on a clean towel. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take a 10 millimeter wrench and loosen the two retainer bolts that hold the carburetor onto the intake plenum and the actual engine itself. You can use two uh, wrenches, but typically you only need one if you loosen the correct nuts. And that's gonna be this one here, as well as one on the reverse. Simply crank it loose, give you a little bit more of a turn. And once you have both loose, then they should turn fairly freely. There's some blue retainer uh, material on these. Um, that comes from the factory uh, that helps prevent them from working loose, which is why I only typically use one wrench. We'll talk about how to realign your carburetor uh, relative to the intake plenum and the engine once we put it back on. But once you break those loose, simply spin with your hands the nuts uh, loose, and we should be able to remove the carburetor fairly effectively. There we go. I again suggest you do this over a bench, table, something like that. Um, if one of these bolts falls down, no big deal. Keep track of uh, the nuts and the bolts. Set them down if you want. And now we have our 206 carburetor uh, free from our engine and we can set our engine aside and really look at the float mechanism itself. Once you get to this point, Unless you've run the engine already, there shouldn't be any fuel in the carburetor, so you can invert it, set it upright. There's a flat surface here, so it easily does that. And you'll need a Phillips screwdriver to loosen these two bolts. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna remove the float bolt itself from the carburetor so we can check our float height. From the factory, these shouldn't be nuclear tight. They should be just a little bit past, basically, uh, hand tight. Um, and that's to prevent uh, pressing down on the float bolt gasket and damaging it. Crack those two loose, again, with a Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, some used 206, you'll see that they have kind of a Phillips head as well as a flat head screwdriver, but remove your screws. Just apply slight twisting pressure to your bolt, to pop it loose, pull it straight upward and off, and that should retain the gasket in a machine groove or uh, cast groove in the float bowl. If not, that's okay, no big deal, but set that aside again on a clean rack. Now we're into the internals of our carburetor and now we're gonna be able to check our float height. Once we have the float bowl removed, now it's time to check our float height. And to do that, we're going to need a pair of digital calipers. If you have a tape measure, that's okay. Um, and that will also work, but it's not quite as accurate. Um, and a small screwdriver. If you don't have a pair of digital calipers or you're not sure that you can afford one, you can get one maybe from Harbor Freight or something a little bit cheaper. Uh, a nice pair of digital ones that will last you a fair bit of time or only about 
$30. And I think that they're a fairly worthwhile investment as if you race 206 with any regularity, likely you're gonna be checking this float height fairly often. Um, again, I will show you the tape measure method. Just know that again, in my opinion, it's not quite as accurate. So the first thing that we want to do uh, and just a visual check that can tell us if we're relatively close or not, is we can look at, there's a seam on the float ball, and I'll zoom in in just a second so you can see it. The float ball that relative to the uh, orientation uh, or, or flat part of the float ball here uh, should be pointed basically slightly uphill, maybe about 10 degrees. Um, That's a great eye check just to see if you're within the ballpark. And if I look at this one here from the factory, I can see it's actually pointed downhill. It is called too rich. So the carburetor at the moment is inverted. If I flip it back to the correct direction and we think about the mechanism in, in which the way that this float works, if we imagine that this is captured in a bowl full of fuel, um, as I raise it in that area that allows more fuel to fill my bowl which means that's kind of my steady reservoir of fuel to go into my carburetor that's going to make the engine run what's called richer meaning that it's going to enrich the mixture of fuel going into the combustion chamber if however i let this drop then my engine is going to run more lean meaning there's going to be less fuel running through the carburetor into the engine at any given time Briggs & Stratton recommends from their factory a float height of 0.86 inches from the base of the float to the very top or the crown of the actual float mechanism itself. The way in which you want to check that is with the carburetor inverted as I have here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check our current float height and we're likely going to have to adjust it. Um, so I turn my uh, calipers on depending on the one that you have. Obviously. You want to zero it, and I will set mine for inches, and I will just set mine at 0 0.860 inches right there. Lock it down, and I will take my calipers and use my height gauge or this device here, and I will check the height of my float. It's important that you want to do this um, relative uh, relatively flat. If you hold the thing at an angle as this can swing up and down, then that will naturally change your measurement. So I will put it on the edge here so that you can see it. There's my caliper measurement and we can see we're actually fairly close. We're a little bit on the rich side. If I use the height gauge, then we can see even more clearly that we're fairly close, but we're a little bit too rich. For most 206ers, the 0 0.860 from the factory, I'm going to recommend you run slightly leaner than that, about 0 0.87 to 0 0.88. You can run at the 0 0.86 measurement, but my suggestion would be consider running a little bit leader, leaner and adjust the rest of your carburetor accordingly. Now, what if we get our carburetor from the factory and it's adjust in, adjusted incorrectly? We need to lean it out, or richen it to get that proper float height setting. Well, that's where your screwdriver comes in handy. And there's a small tab right here on the top of the float that we can see uh, we can move up and down and that allows us to raise the float or lower it in the bowl. And I'm gonna do that just now. So what I will do is I will take my small screwdriver, reach underneath this gap here in between the um, float mechanism and the valve or the little tab, and just give it a slight twist. Don't need a lot, just to bend it downward ever so slightly. Now we're gonna check our float height, and we'll see. That one looks like it's about the same. And that one, well, looks like it's raised ever so slightly. This is one of these adjustments you wanna sneak up on. You don't need to do a lot all at once, and just work progressively to get where you wanna go. So. From there, I will twist just a little bit more. Now my tab has been adjusted a little bit more. And now, hopefully, we will see um, when I check my float height, um, 
that I have gone significantly leaner. So um, one thing you can do is again, set it on the edge. And to adjust that, I will raise this up so that I get proper overhang right about there. That's about 0.91. So in this case, I've gone a little bit too far. No worries, we can always readjust. To readjust this, um, say you need to go in the direction of, rather than going too lean, go a little bit richer. On the very front side, there's kind of a uh, trap of, uh, I don't know, uh, polygon shaped little dip in it. And you reach your screwdriver in there, reach underneath the tab, twist your screwdriver slightly, and pry up ever so slightly. That again, raises the tab, that lowers the float in the bowl, um, which will cause you to have a slightly richer mixture. So let's check our height. Right now, let's see where we're at. Right about there. And that's pretty close to what I want. So there you have it. There's how you can adjust your float height from lean to rich, back and forth, get yourself pretty close to dialed in.